Hey there, Dr. Anna Maria Helt here at Osada Natural Health. Welcome to Monday's Mushrooms, and this is episode 11, I believe. I'm starting to lose track. Anyway, uh, it's more important that I keep doing them than I remember which episode. So this week, I thought I would talk about telling the difference between agaricus mushrooms, which are wild cousins of button mushrooms, and amanita mushrooms, which are, in some cases, deadly. So here goes. So someone might say, hey, I've seen agaricus mushrooms before. I've picked betel mushrooms and horse mushrooms with some friends. They've got a white stalk and a white cap. This is true, but so do some species of deadly amanitas. So here we have two mushrooms with a white cap or whitish cap and whitish stalk. And the one on the left is agaricus. The one on the right is amanita. So if you're just looking at the color of the cap surface, and the color of the stalk, you could really get yourself in trouble. And by you, I mean the general you. I'm not pointing my finger at anybody. <laughs> so again, just to uh, make that point even more, we have two beautiful white mushroom caps with some rosy tints to them. The one on the left is a deadly amanita. Uh, destroying angel. The one on the right is an agaricus that I actually took home and cooked and ate later because I knew it was an edible species of agaricus. Not all of them are. So you might be like, yeah, 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 lady, whatever. I know that amanitas have rings around the stalk. That's how I can tell the difference between an amanita and another mushroom. And indeed, many amanitas do have a ring around the stalk, uh, and, but so do agaricus. So the one on the right here is an amanita with a ring around the stalk. The one on the left is an agaricus with a ring around the stalk, an annular ring. This is a remnant from the very baby embryonic mushroom when it first started to grow. It's a piece of tissue that is left around after that mushroom grows. Here we go again, two mushroom stalks here that both have an annulus, a ring. The one on the right is agaricus. The one on the left is amanita. And <laughs> I'm having fun with this, so here we go again. Some ratty, uh, worn out rings here on a couple of stalks. The one on the left is amanita. The one on the right is agaricus. And then one last one, and I promise I'll move on. We've got our two stalks here where the rings are really worn off. You can see where they are or were, but uh, not as prominent as some of the examples I just showed you. The one on the left is agaricus, the one on the right is amanita. So you can't rely on the presence or absence of a ring to tell you whether you've got a wild button mushroom cousin, agaricus, or an amanita. Not only that, amanitas don't always have rings. So this amanita on the right is an amanita species that normally lacks an annular ring. This agaricus on the left, you can barely see the ring on it, right? All you see is maybe a little bit of light coloration there. So um, be careful. We need multiple points of identification here. Moving on, you might be like, well, I know that amanitas tend to have a cup at the base and they're usually kind of bulbous at the bottom, um, those of you who are familiar with amanitas. And so indeed, here we go. Here is an amanita with a bulbous base and a, a cup at the very bottom or a vulva at the very bottom of the stalk. Sometimes you have to dig down into the ground to see this. And if you are trying to do mushroom ID, you really do wanna make sure you're getting all of that stalk. Here is another amanita with a very bulbous base and a cup. Here's an amanita that's still in the ground and you can actually see that cup or vulva just sticking up from the dirt there. Um, you don't always see that. Sometimes you really do have to dig into the dirt to see it because it'll be covered. Uh, here are some deadly amanitas with very prominent cups at the base, especially that sucker on the left, it's huge. Well, <laughs> here's the same species of amanita. Well, looking at the very base of the mushroom, this hasn't been you know, cut off or anything. This is the bottom of the mushroom and there's no vulva, there's no cup. Uh, sometimes they wear off, uh, they can wear away. And so uh, you can't always stake your life on this. And indeed, here's an agaricus uh, where the base looks awful similar to that amanita. And you might be like, well, heck, how am I supposed to tell the difference? 
uh, one thing to look for, and actually before I move on, let me just say that, you know, a YouTube video like this is not sufficient for staking your life on when it comes to mushroom ID. You really need to get into it. And if you look through my channel, I do have a video where I talk about the different aspects of mushroom identification, but you really need to take your time and to take classes, to go out with experts and learn your mushrooms before you stick any of them in your mouth. With that as a disclaimer, here's an agaricus mushroom with dark gills. So as the mushroom or, or fruiting body, as it were, gets older in agaricus species, the gills will get darker. So you see the brownish gills here, these stripy things, which are on the undersurface of the cap. This is where the mushroom spores come from and the spores are, in a sense, the seeds of the mushroom, if you would. Here is agaricus as well with pinkish gills. And so agaricus, when the mushroom is really little and young, the gills can actually be quite light in color. These are fairly light. Some might be light gray, some might even be almost a whitish color with the baby agaricus. But as the fruiting body gets older, the gills will take on more and more color until they um, eventually get brown. But here's some really lovely pink gilled agaricus. Uh, mushrooms, a lot of agaricus mushrooms will have like a purplish gray or a pinkish stage of their gills, uh, really pretty here. So some pink agaricus, and then they get browner and browner, almost a chocolate brown as they age. This is in contrast to amanitas, which have bright white or very light gills. So we have our amanita here on the right. The one on the left is an agaricus that happens to be an edible species, and I ate it. This picture is not sufficient to tell you that it's an edible species of agaricus. Uh, but regardless, I ate that one when I got it home. The amanita on the right will earn you a dirt bath if you eat it. Another way to tell between agaricus mushrooms and amanita mushrooms is to do what's called a spore print. So spores essentially the seeds of a mushroom are tiny 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 they're too small to see with the naked eye so what you do is make a spore print and pile a whole bunch of them up so you can see what color they are to do this you pop off the stalk carefully and then lay the cap gill side down on a piece of paper on glass on aluminum foil uh, whatever and then cover it with a bowl and if you wait several hours to overnight and the mushroom is actively making spores you'll get a spore print now a trick to this is to put a drop of water on top of the mushroom cap before you put the bowl over it and sometimes that will induce it to sporulate even more so these are two different species of agaricus you're seeing here a little one and a big one and you can even see the pattern of the gills on this bigger spore print here dark brown uh, and indeed here is uh, some spores from that big spore print looked at under a microscope and this is blown up about a thousand times the, the size of the actual spore so they're brown amanitas will have white to very light colored spores in general and it's hard to see the spore print but if you look in the upper left corner you'll see some wavy lines there um, lines of spores. If you look at the top, you can see some the gill pattern of spore release and also at the very bottom of the photo you might be able to see the, the lines there, the spore prints kind of showing you the gill pattern of this amanita. So that's another way to tell the difference between amanitas and agaricus. And you know just when you think you know what's going on and you know what's what, you run into something like this. This was a couple of years ago um, uh, near a reservoir in the mountains where I live. I'm trying to get my dog to stop making noise behind me. Uh, I was on a dirt bike going up a forest road and there were mushrooms off to the left in the grass. You could see these white caps. So I stopped and hobbled over and was like, wow, that's a really cool mushroom. That's an amanita. Look at the cap at the base, the cup at the base rather, that little sack looking thing in that ring. But then I smelled it and it smelled almondy. Amanitas don't tend to smell like almonds. Some species of agaricus and certain other mushrooms do, often due to chemicals like benzaldehyde or anisaldehyde. Uh, so, you know, I looked around, I picked another one that uh, was fully open with the gills exposed, and I looked at these gills and was like, huh. 
they're kind of light colored they're white and again i was like damn it smells like an agaricus but it looks like an amanita and actually if you look at this mushroom in per person the gills are maybe a very faint lavender color and all of these mushrooms are pretty new i didn't get a chance to see them as they aged so I thought, well, you know, I'm going to take this home and I'm going to try to spore print it. And if this is agaricus, um, maybe I'll get a brown spore print. Not sure if the mushroom is mature enough just yet to drop its spores. Uh, and if it's, if it's an amanita, a stocky amanita, if it is, but if it's an amanita, then the spore prints will be lighter. Well, lo and behold, because I was on a dirt bike, I didn't really have a, be a great mechanism for getting some of these guys home and they were pretty much destroyed by the time I got home. So I did not get a chance to spore print these. I posted it up later on uh, to our local mycological society and somebody did ship in that they think it's some weird double ringed agaricus, but that, you know, that wasn't enough for me to put it in my mouth. I'm gonna go back there the same time this year and see if I can find more of them and figure out what the sucker is. So even for those of us who've been picking mushrooms for a couple of decades, we run into some things that stump us. Um, and just one last note here, before I sign off, not all agaricus mushrooms are edible. There are multiple species uh, in the agaricus genus that are in the so-called lose your lunch bunch as coined by mushroom guy, David Aurora. So they'll make you really sick. And while they might not kill you, they'll make you wish you were dead. So, so even amongst a genus that has some very prized and delectable edible mushrooms like Agaricus campestris, the meadow mushroom, Agaricus arvensis, the horse mushroom, the prince mushroom, and multiple other species of Agaricus. There are a bunch that are not edible. So just be careful when you're out there. Know what you're doing. Have multiple guidebooks for your region. Connect with your local mycological society. Go on forays. Know what time of year the mushroom you want is going to be fruiting, know where it's going to be fruiting, what kind of habitat, what kinds of plants will be around, uh, and know your mushroom 100% before cooking it and putting it in your mouth. So thanks for watching. Any questions or comments, go for it. I look at them all and respond, and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.